All right, this is fourth grade, module six, lesson six. And in this lesson, students are gonna be using the area model and the number line to understand that mixed numbers, uh, uh, how mixed numbers look in terms of ones, tenths, and hundredths, how it looks like in terms of fractions and decimals, how they all relate to one another. It's, it's really a beautiful lesson that is uh, using best practice in terms of ha allowing our students the ability, the option, the opportunity to compare and contrast a variety of representations so that they can really understand decimals and they can choose the angle that they want to look at the decimals in order to really understand them. So let's get started on this. So here we're going to start with um, shade the area to represent this fraction and, uh, and then locate it on a number line. So we're connecting fractions, decimals, the area model, and the number line all on one problem. Man, this is beautiful. So, uh, and we can fill it in in any order our students want. It doesn't matter. So, for example, let's start by shading because it says shade. So I, I'm going to shade. Uh, so we're going to start, and I'm going to shade it in blue. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to shade in two holes. So here is one hole. And then here is a second hole. So there's our two holes. Now we want to shade in 35 hundredths. So what we need our students to understand is they, they need to understand that, oh, wait a second, that's going to be two holes plus 3 tenths plus 5 hundredths. Now, if they don't understand that right off the bat, teachers, they can, if they want, they can just treat it as 35 hundredths and cut horizontal lines to turn this whole thing into 35 hundredths, and then they could shade in 35 individual tiny little hundredths squares. But I'm going to kind of do a little bit more of a sophisticated way, and we're going to say, well, uh, we know that we need to shade in 3 tenths and then 5 hundredths. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to say, well, first we're going to shade in 3 tenths. So 3 tenths is going to look like 1, 2, and 3. So there is our 3 tenths, which is the same thing as 30 hundredths, because it's 10 plus 10 plus 10. And then we need to shade in uh, 5 hundredths. So I'm going to cut that in half, and then I'm going to cut each half into 5 pieces. And so there are our tenths. And we want to shade in five of those tenths. One, two, three, four, five. And so that's the resulting picture. Whoa! That's the resulting picture of our representation. So we've got two and thirty-five hundredths. So that's equal to two, three tenths plus five hundredths. And if we want to think about that, that that could be also thought of as 2 and 35 hundredths, 2.35, 2.35. So fraction, decimal, we've got our area model over here. I did some a little decomposition as a bonus. Now, where is that going to live on the number line? Well, where does 2 live? Well, 2 is right here. So now we're going to zoom in. And in fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that 2.35 and I'm going to write it right there because we're going to need it, because now we're going to zoom in. And so here's our, our location between, oops, yikes. Where does my 2.35 go? 2.35. And so now I'm going to zoom in, and then here is our distance between 2 and 3. So where does 2.3 live? Well, 2.3 is going to live right here because that's 2.1, as in 2 and 1 tenth, 2 and 2 tenths, 2 and 3 tenths. So there is 2.3, here is 2.4, so where is 2 and 3 tenths plus, three, um, plus 5 hundredths going to live? Well, that 5 hundredths means I've got to zoom in even further, and I've got to cut this distance into 10 equal sized pieces. 
One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I've got to move over five of those pieces. So that location right there, right there, is our 2.35. 2 uh, and 3 tenths, that's this, plus 5 hundredths. So let's zoom out to see what that looks like all told. Oh my gosh, you could barely even see the dash marks. They're so stinking small. But that's really kind of cool. And that really points out how tiny hundredths really are. So here we're connecting the unit form with fractions and decimals. So two ones and two hundredths. So what is that going to look like? Well, two ones and two hundredths could look like that. Do we have any tenths? No. So the fraction equivalent would be two ones, no tenths, and two hundredths. So that's another way to do it. If you want, parents and teachers, you could use like a number bond and break things up and show in, in specific, you know, each part. Uh, how about, oh, let's do two ones and sixteen hundredths. What is that going to look like? Well, two ones and sixteen hundredths. Well, two ones uh, and sixteen hundredths. So that's what that's going to look like. And then if we wanted to, we could write that as a um, decimal. So that would look like 2.16. Now, how did we get that? So some students might say, whoa, wait, wait. They might just kind of revert to some sort of algorithm and say, oh, two digits? I'm just going to put two digits right here. We don't really want them to just revert to some sort of blind algorithm. We want students to say, hey, two and sixteen hundredths. Well, that's the same thing as two. Uh, oops, I don't want the two. I don't care. Well, yeah, let's do the two. So it's going to be three portions in our, kind of like our number bond. So the two is right here. The sixteen hundredths can be thought of as one tenth plus six hundredths. You know, that's the idea is we really want students to be able to see that, oh, two and sixteen hundredths is this two is two. Ten of our hundredths equals one tenth. And then the extra six hundredths is six hundredths. So we really want students not to just re resort to blindly using numbers and pushing them around. We really want it to be meaningful to our students. And just one last one, because we can. Nine ones, sixty-two hundredths. So nine ones, sixty-two hundredths is equal to 9.62. 9.62, as in we have nine holes, nine ones, we have six tenths, and we have two hundredths. So if we wanted to, we could write that in expanded form. Nine plus six tenths plus two hundredths. And here is really fun. It's just kind of a way to match your unit form, your decimal form, and your fraction form. And I love the fact that they're using the same numbers, basically, to really force us to think. So four ones and eighteen hundredths. Well, that's going to... Oh, let's do a thicker pen here. And that's going to go to here. And then now that we're here, 4 and 18 hundredths, where is that? And that's going to go right here. And then let's just do one last one. Let's do um, <clears throat> 4 ones and 8 hundredths. So 4 ones and 8 hundredths, where is that going to go? Well, 4 ones and 8 hundredths is right here. And then 4.08, or 4 ones and 8 hundredths, is going to go right there. And so we're seeing some connections. And I again, I really see an I, some sort of game where we make cards. And we make cards with in a unit form, decimal form, and fraction form, maybe even a number line or area model. And students are going to play some sort of game where they're trying to create a set, a matching set of three or four cards, depending on what kinds of representations we use. And that wraps up uh, fourth grade, module six, lesson six. Students are using the area model and the number line to represent those mixed numbers using ones, tens, and hundredths. And of course, we're doing fractions and decimals.